By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a short little video for you, but a very interesting one, where I play with my wall deck once again, Break in the Wall, and I'm playing against Park Gofield, so I've played against this player before with this uh, particular deck, but this time uh, Park has brought a different deck to the table, a very funny deck, uh, a deck that features Battering Ram and other crazy cards, and we were actually uh, uh, making this ha uh, Halloween video for you at the time, and then Park said, wait a minute, I got a deck somewhere, and I think it, it works so well against your wallet, can we do an extra game? And I said, yeah, sure, I'm going to record that, and that match is exactly what we're going to watch right now. First, I'm just quickly going to uh, discuss both of these decks, especially Park's deck is, is a really cool one. Uh, to have a look at. If you want to go straight to the games, you can check the description below. You'll find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp and it'll take you directly to this particular game. But first, let's have a look at both of the decks. And this is the deck of my opponent today, Park Gofield. And as you can see, it's a very interesting deck. And uh, like I said, it was a pretty funny situation where he said, hey, wait a minute, you've got walls. I just have the perfect deck. And he just pulled this out of a drawer and started shuffling and we went to play and look at this he has a play set of bock rats and you know usually you would say okay bock rats it's a one one for one who cares but look at that ability cannot be blocked by walls and that's that's going to be really really useful in this uh matchup also we see the battering ram a card that i really liked as a kid antiquities is actually my favorite set in magic uh, i collected it when i started playing when it was like 11 12 and battering ram says bans but only when attacking any wall blocking battering ram is destroyed. Walls destroyed this way deal their damage before dying. So it's not like they don't deal damage. But I mean, this is a wall killer. How cool is that? And of course, we see a nice, uh, some nice combo action here going on. Like the Howl from Beyond working together really well with the Ornithopters. And also the Unholy Strength. Strengths work together really well with the Ornithopters. And the Black Mana Battery to kind of save mana to play a giant uh howl from beyond or a giant drain life so i'm really looking forward to kind of see that in action and also to see uh if the battering ram can actually like do some serious damage in this matchup since i'm playing with an actual wall deck okay so this is my wall deck so i've talked about it before in other games so i'm not really going into it that much but just just to give you an idea of the deck that i'm playing for this matchup the idea of this deck is is pretty basic playing out the walls play at fortified areas so you're kind of collecting power and then you want to use your sort of the ages to sacrifice your walls and just deal 20 damage to to your opponent or at least a lot of damage uh, maybe you know in the process i can use my acron legionnaire you see that card there uh, on the right it's the only summon creature in this deck i guess normal creature you could say maybe i can use the acron legionnaire to deal some normal damage also maybe i can use some animate walls to deal some early damage all the damage that i can do means that i have to do less damage with the sword of the ages but the basic idea is play out a lot of walls, use Sword of the Ages to deal a lot of damage and win the game with one swing, with one Sword of the Ages sacrifice. So I'm really curious because, you know, Park is playing <laughs> with Battering Rams. Now remember, I don't know this when I'm starting this actual matchup. So I have no idea. I'm completely oblivious. We're just going into this. So really looking forward to see how this match is, uh, is going to pan out. So let's go to the actual game. Okay, so let's have a go how this is going to work out here. So on the left, the red in the kitchen deck, and I'm playing with my brick in the wall deck. So remember that I have a lot of walls, because I think that's going to be decisive for this matchup. We're going to roll the dice to see who gets to start, and we always do odds or evens. I think Park went for odds, being with the mono black deck, so he gets to start this one. Turn one, a bat, so that's a pretty good start here. Zero one flyer, and you can pump it for one black to give it plus one plus zero, but you cannot pump it with more than two black mana. Really works nice when you have a bad moon. And it looks like I'm thinking here. I mean, it's just my opening turn. Uh, let's see, draw for turn. You're playing a basic planes, passing turn, so no land tax for me turn one. And there's an unholy strength. Nice. So that means immediate pain. And he's pumping it as well. So that's uh, three damage for me. That means I'm going down to 17. And here you can see that unholy strength really doing a lot of work. Now I'm finding a land tax. Probably top deck that one. And I'm playing a spirit link over the bats. So at least it's going to protect me for now. And black having no 
means to deal with enchantments is probably going to last long. And there's that battering ram. So that's a huge problem in my deck because I play with a lot of walls. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not great. I think it's it's one of the rare situations where a battering ram is actually useful. And Park is not playing out of the land. Probably doesn't want me to activate the land tax. So I'm playing a strip mine. The question is, am I going to strip one of my own lands? And there's a Plague Rats. Now it's still 1-1, one, one, but it gets plus 1, plus 1 for every other Plague Rats that's in there. And there's a Disenchant over the Battering Ram. So remember, the Battering Ram is very important for me. And look at that. I'm stripping my own basic plane so that I get a land tax activation. And we're not playing EC, so I'm only playing with one Strip Mine. But Park has already three lands in, in the game, so that means that I get to use land text next turn as well if I just uh, play a land this turn. And I'm having to discard a planes there. Oh, I'm changing my mind. Actually, I had seven on hand. Okay, <laughs> that's a bit of a sloppy play here from my side. And there's a Siphon Soul, and Siphon Soul deals two damage to all opponents, and uh, you gain life. You gain two life, so in this case, Park is going to 22. And I'm losing two more. I'm already on 14. So a pretty aggressive start here from Park. And I think I'm forgetting my land tax here. So I'm, I'm really not playing at my best. And I believe I'm passing turn. Yeah, so that's Park's go. Yeah, it's funny. It's actually a playmat he's playing on. So you might think that's just his desk, but it's uh, it's his playmat with the uh, the wood pattern. Uh, let's see what he can do. And there's a bad moon. Not too much trouble now, but in the long run, the bad moon can really deal some damage. And I'm just really happy that I played that spirit link over the bats. And tapping for four, is there a wall of swords? No, there's actually a primal clay. And this is always difficult because primal clay is a card from the antiquities and you get to choose a 2-2 two, two flying creature, a 3-3 three, three creature, or a 1-6 wall. So I wonder what choice I've made. And there's the Bok rats. So remember, the Bok rats cannot be blocked by walls. Playing land number five. Tapping four again, playing a wall of sorts. And the Bok Rats are now 2-2 and they cannot be blocked by walls. So I hope I have a 3-3 Primal Clay. I think I kind of need like a counter or something to indicate uh, what it is. So we can actually see it, you know, when we're looking back at these videos. And there's the Bok Rats coming in for two there. So I assume I've made it or into a 2-2 Flyer or a 1-6 Wall. Paying six here, is there? Yeah, there's the Sword of the Ages. So remember, with Sword of the Ages, it comes tapped into play. As soon as it untaps, I can sacrifice an X amount of creatures and deal damage to any target equal to the power of all the creatures combined. So right now, if I assume that my primary clay is a 1-6 wall, and my um, I have a wall of swords and a wall of spears, that means I now have seven damage on the board so that's not a lot and he's still attacking me here with his bok rats dealing me two more damage also having those bats there who are not useful at the moment because of that wall of swords and it looks like i'm actually going to use it that's an interesting choice here maybe i have a lot of oh there's a balance oh and this is a very nice play I was already like, why am I using the sword? But now I understand. And I have to discard a card and get rid of some lands. And this is quite a nice play here. And dealing damage and getting rid of all of his creatures because those Bok Rats were a serious problem for me in combination with that Bad Moon. There's an Ornithopter. Another one. And another Siphon Soul. And those Siphon Souls are doing some serious work as well. So I'm now on 8 and my opponent is back on 18. And what can I play? A wall of Keltrops. 
So it's a 2-1 wall from Legends. There's a Plague Rats. Remember that Plague Rats is 2-2 because of the Bad Moon. So that means that when he attacks, we probably have to trade because I'm only on 8. Playing a Mox Pearl. What can I do? Only one card in hand and I have to pass turn. And I mean, look at the amount of creatures that Park already has on the battlefield. So despite the balance, taking care of so many creatures, it looks like I'm back to square one and there's another sword, but that's not really going to help me here. Another battering ram. Serious problems now for me. And this is great. I mean, is Park going to band with the battering ram? That would be awesome. Yes, that's what he's doing. <laughs> so that means he's attacking with the plague rats who is coming in with the battering ram. Is it sitting on the battering ram? Is it helping ramming the battering ram? How big is that rats actually? There are probably a lot of rats. Maybe it's like a whole group of rats running up towards me with the battering ram anyway i'm blocking and he's choosing to take the damage on his battering ram that makes sense because he's got another one ready for action and to be honest it's not looking good for me he's dealing three damage now that means i'm going to five life or am i playing a sword to plowsiers on the plague rats that means that my opponent is back at 20 life again. Playing a spirit link on the bats. I kind of have to here. And I'm going to 6, getting damage from that one battering ram that's still remaining. Passing turn again. Go to 5. I need a solution. Tapping 4. Playing a wrath of God. Wow, wow, that's so nice. That means that once again I'm killing all of his creatures, but look at him go playing another Plague Rats. And what I need actually is life. I need some life gain. At least there's a wall of swords that can protect me from the Plague Rats. And... But how can I win this one? I'm so far behind it seems. But at least I have stabilized. Oh, and now I'm starting to... Oh, this is interesting. I'm playing a Resurrection. Now, one of the things that I actually did wrong, and um, I think one of the viewers, uh, uh, Kundert, pointed it out to me, is when you use Sword of the Ages, Sword of the Ages and all the creatures you've used to sacrifice to it are removed from the game. So my plan to use a Sword of the Ages, sacrifice the creatures, and get one of those creatures back with uh, Resurrection... It doesn't work it's not legal so basically the play that i'm doing here is is not legal so i'm sorry for that park uh, unfortunately my swords are in italian so that makes it a bit confusing for me as well uh, again i'm also using the land text in the wrong way because i'm supposed to show the lands that i'm taking out of my library so all in all this is very sloppy play but i just wanted to to show you this game because i think it's just so amusing uh, when you look at park's deck Playing, playing with uh, with the Bach Reds, playing with the Plague Reds, uh, you know, all the things going on. I just wanted to show it, uh, show this game to you. So please don't be too harsh on the gameplay here. Um, passing turn again. At least I seem to have stabilized a little bit. Again, I don't know what the Primal Clay is. I assume it's just a 1-6 wall in this case. And there's another Siphon Soul. Those Siphon Souls are doing an amazing job here. Lose two life, gain two life. And maybe we should see those more in an aggro deck. Obviously, most people uh, choosing... Okay, so I guess I made it into a 2-2 two -two flyer. Attacking now, and I guess I'm sacking them now? But how is this working? Am I playing another? Oh, I'm playing another Wrath of God. One of the changes I made in, in, in this build with the wall deck is I added two Wrath of Gods. And I really wanted to play with this idea of activating the sword, wiping the board, on my side that is, and then playing a one-sided one Wrath of God, basically. <laughs> Look at this! Yes, that's. I think, I think, Park, you deserve the win. You deserve the win. Uh, well done, well done. Um, playing that Drain Life for the actual win. Uh, for a moment there, I thought I was able to kind of get back into this game, but this was a pretty ridiculous 
game, like you said, was very sloppy, a lot of mistakes. Uh, also, the way I'm using the res resurrection, it's not possible because when you use the Sword of the Ages, all your creatures are removed, like I said, so then you cannot use the resurrection. Uh, I really um, did like the way that the Wrath of Gods worked. So my idea of using the sword, wiping my board, and then playing a Wrath of God really seems to work. So I think I'm going to keep the Wrath of Gods in uh, in this build, in this wall build. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this kind of uh, weird little in-between game and, and, and you really like the deck of Park Goldfield. I'm, I know that I did. I mean, those battering rams, they're just, uh, they're great. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, uh, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, please do so by subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, and of course, sharing the videos that I make. It's very much appreciated. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>